Hey guys, welcome back to my living room. Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about your first astrophotography setup. This video is for those of you that are shooting with a mirrorless camera, a DSLR, with a camera lens on a tripod, but you wanna get longer tracked exposures of the night sky. Maybe you're at that phase where you're not sure if buying a large equatorial mount is for you. You wanna get into something a little bit less expensive that you can upgrade along the way. I think it might be helpful for me to discuss my first astrophotography setup, how it grew with me throughout the year, so that you might get a better idea on how you would be putting together your first kit. The best thing about this astrophotography setup is I still use it to this day. Generally speaking, I set it up side by side with my bigger mount. Which brings me to this little mount, the Star Adventurer. The Star Adventurer was my first astronomical mount. I really liked that it took replaceable AA batteries, which last for approximately 72 hours, has a built-in polar scope for easy alignment, multiple rates for tracking the stars, the sun, the moon, and also multiple speeds for time lapses during the day or night. You can use it in both hemispheres, slow motion control buttons for easy composition, a snap port supporting multiple DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, a mini USB supporting alternative power methods, and most importantly an ST4 port for auto guiding, a heavy duty clutch that supports the max 5 kilogram payload that you can load up this tiny star tracker with. And here's your first Astro upgrade. Your DSLR or mirrorless camera is just gonna sit on top of the Star Adventure just like this. I purchased the Star Adventure Astro Pack, which comes with the declination bracket you see here. This configuration you see here will run you about $355. It will also thread onto any photographic tripod, just make sure it's sturdy enough to handle the weight. At this stage, there are a few optional accessories that you're gonna wanna consider. The declination bracket by itself allows you to turn the camera left to right, but there are no other adjustments that you can make to fine tune your composition. Getting a ball head mount like you see here totally solves that problem. Best of all, you can just thread it on to the declination bracket. But there's a downside if you select this option. The mount will be out of balance situating the camera this way. Balance is everything when you're tracking the night sky. I recommend purchasing a counterweight bar to solve that issue, which will run you about an additional $30. Now, for those of you that don't want to bother with a counterweight bar, and I can't blame you for that, there is another option for you. That is the Star Adventure Photo Pack. What it comes with is a ball head mount, so you can just simply screw on your ball head to the Star Adventure, then it will just track like you expect it to. The reason why I chose the Astro Pack was because I knew I would have a telescope at some point in time. One thing I would like to add is if you do end up purchasing the Astro Pack, there are little metal studs on the declination bracket, the horizontal side, which will also allow you to thread on a ball head. This allows you to use a ball head and a camera without the counterweight bar. All you would need to do is slide the declination bracket up and down until it achieves a balance point on the mount. This part is also optional, but the Skywatcher wedge mount will assist you in polar alignment. It will keep your mount level and help you dial in your latitude. This latitude base will run you about $70. And guys, I'm gonna tell you this part is worth it to get. If your mount isn't level, you're not gonna be able to track very well. Don't forget about your intervalometer. Chances are, if you're a photographer, you already own one of these. But this will help you get many sub-exposures as your imaging night progresses. You can usually pick one up for about $25 online. Pretty elaborate setup, right? Expect an upgrade like that to cost around $500. That's if you already have a tripod sturdy enough that you can use. But the Star Adventure will give you the ability to take longer exposures because it's tracking the night sky along its right ascension axis. Here's a photo that I took with my camera on the Star Adventure with an 85 millimeter lens. Pretty cool, right? Which leads us into phase two. What if you want to add a telescope to this existing configuration? Well, let's check that out. 
The first thing you want to do is select a suitable telescope. In my case, I chose the William Optics Zenith Star Z61 APO Refractor. And if you want to learn more about this telescope, I actually did a video on it, so I'll put that link in the description. It was a solid choice for me, not only because it weighed less than four pounds, but I was able to install filters inside the telescope, it had a place for a guide scope, and I knew I'd be auto-guiding later down the road. It came with the telescope mounting ring, and also a dovetail mount so that I could attach it to the Star Adventure. All I had to do next was remove the ball head. I acquired the correct mounting plate so that I could use the dovetail on the telescope. I also purchased a metal T-ring that would fit the lens mount on my camera. After that, it was a matter of installing the mounting plate, then carefully installing the telescope, installing the T-ring, finally attaching my camera as I would a normal lens. And just like that, I had my first deep sky rig, my first telescope, and my DSLR united as one. The best thing I liked about it, and I still do, is I don't need any type of computers. I just need my camera, my telescope, and intervalometer, and I'm ready to go. With it, I was able to obtain pictures like this. It was my first photo of NGC 7000, also known as the North American Nebula, even though you could barely see it because of all the stars in the way. But I was super excited because for the first time in my life, I was tracking the night sky for minutes at a time. Then I swapped out my full frame unmodded camera for an APS-C size modded camera. I've been shooting infrared landscape photography for many years. I felt lucky because I had quite a few DSLRs to choose at this point. And the naked sensor mod is exactly the same. This is where I saw the most difference, not only because of the hydrogen I was picking up now, but my field of view was a lot closer with the same scope. This was due to the smaller chip size, effectively increasing my focal length 1.6 times. I eventually gave auto guiding a try and it was actually easy to add. At this point, I went with the 30mm ZWO guide scope and the ASI 120mm mini guide camera. From there, all it took was plugging in my ST4 cable, then plugging in a USB-C cable, then plugging the other side of the ST4 cable to the auto guide port in the Star Adventurer, finally plugging in my USB-C cable to my laptop computer. Then with the help of a program called PHD2, I was able to get auto guiding on my Star Adventurer. If you've never heard of that program before, I'll put that link in the description. With auto guiding, I was able to get even longer exposures. Here's a photo of the California Nebula in full spectrum. Which led me to my final upgrade. I removed my modded camera and camera tiering Replace them both with a ZWO filter drawer and an ASI 183mm Pro cooled camera. But that's not all. I ended up running my guide scope and cooled camera through the ASI Air Pro with a set of ZWO LRGB filters and also narrowband filters. If you're interested in learning more about narrowband, I did a video on it and I'll put that link in the description for you. With the help of the ASI Air Pro and narrowband filters, I was able to get my first ever photo of the Rosette Nebula using five minute sub exposures, just cause I could. Well guys, I hope through hearing my experiences, it's gonna help you with your decision making process of what type of astrophotography rig you're gonna build. Don't think you gotta get the Star Adventure either. There are many great star trackers on the market. This video was just to give you an idea of where to start and how to start, depending on how elaborate you want your setup. But if this video helped you out in some way, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.